Updates and bans, rainbows and pride. You are now tuned in to the Disney Holic Show. Hello and welcome to the Disney Holic Show. That's Mike TV. And that's Jen Diz. Today we take a magical tour of the latest happenings at the Disneyland Resort, uncover some intriguing band Disney content, and joyfully kick off the vibrant celebration of Pride! My goodness! Gracious, I just realized, you know, sometimes I like, especially now that we're recording and adding our YouTube or our, um, podcasts onto YouTube, I like put something on Disney and I make sure I'm wearing my Disney shirts, which I usually am anyways, let's be real. But <laughs> today, why am I not wearing one of the Disney Pride shirts? I was thinking of the same. Wearing like <laughs> Fantasia shirt. What? I'm wearing a Beetlejuice Halloween Horror Night shirt. So there you go. Oh yeah, we both failed hard. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> You know why? Because we wear our pride on our sleeves. That's an everyday thing for everyday us. That's thing. right. That's yeah. right. Well, speaking of happy pride month, it happy is now pride. June. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's always exciting and fun to see things going on around the Disneyland resort for pride. And once again, they are doing pride night, which still is down in the books as my favorite after hours night ever at Disneyland. Um, and that is going on June 18th and the 20th. So in a couple weeks here, sold out. Wow, that's so, sorry. so cool. Sold if out. If you still were thinking about going, it's gone. Um, but yeah, I went last year, a lot of fun. I'm not going this year, and I'm like, you know, you get that FOMO feeling now that it's too late. Getting it. I'm getting it right now. When are <laughs> you gonna come out and go with me? I don't know. I would have gone if that happened. Pride. It seems so cool. It is. It's like the best. It's basically a adult only party like it's not adults only but it's like 99 percent adults which is just like super fun oh that no adds offense, to the littles but <laughs> to the reason to go like if you're someone who wants to go when there's less families kids right that, right yeah right time yeah it is um well this year they rolled out another pride line um and we did see some new pieces come in which is always fun because sometimes you just see like what they had last year or maybe a couple tiny additions, but we saw some good stuff. And I know you mentioned on your own that you really liked the collection this year. Yes. So I thought we'd take a look. I put the link in the uh, document if you want to open it and look through them with me. We could just kind of describe our favorites to everyone listening. Yeah. Um, what stood out to you first about this year's Pride collection? For me, what I'm liking is the dark colors as a base. There's a lot of black and then mm -hmm. the rainbow logos on top of it. So it's like the best Same. of both worlds, right? Like yes. you love a black tee, a black sweater, whatever. And then you add the rainbow. It's like perfect. And it pops, right? Pops, like the yeah. rainbow pops. I love that. Um, what I saw first, and I don't even know if you could tell this without seeing it in person, but the Pride um, Spirit jersey has this like glitter all over it. It's like these little oh. silver sparkles almost all over the entire spirit jersey. It's very cute and tasteful. It's not like obnoxious. It's just like a light sprinkling around, if that makes sense, instead of like, you know, gemmed out. I've seen some people, though, doing some extra stuff to their apparel, and I'm <laughs> super jealous because it looks really, really cute. Like, it's just like glammed up, bedazzled, whatever you want to call it. Um, and they're like basically doing those pride letters. So it says Disney pride right next to each other. And only pride is in rainbow, which I also think is tasteful and very cute. Very cute. Um, the letter yeah. I has a Mickey head for a dot. Super cute. Right. And then the rest and they, is like, all caps. It all up and mm -hmm. it looks even cooler, but it is great just as is as well. And then on the very bottom, which I like this design, but I don't like the placement because it's right on your butt. And I just don't think they should ever put anything right on anybody's butt on any. Oh, on the back of the black. The spirit jersey. jersey. Yeah. So it says you know, love that one. It says love. It has a little rainbow in the Mickey silhouette. It is cute. However, it's right on the butt. 
It's kind of yeah, weird. it already has Disney Pride on the back shoulders. I don't think it needed the extra thing on the right, bottom. Right, yeah. 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 Um, and like for us women with with our curves, you know me, I got curves <laughs> for days. Like that's just not going to work out. Like an, any type of design that's lower than the waist is like a waste in that point. No pun intended. But that but... waist <laughs> of a waist. It'll be like half folded under because the shirt is long too. It's just like, just kind of weird placement so i'm not a fan of that but the rest of the spirit jersey i love it's very cute generally i'm not a fan of the spirit jerseys anyways because they seem to have too much going on so it doesn't surprise me that they put that there but it's just a little over the top i also this is just a personal thing of mine i don't care for the love part of pride because pride means so many things you don't have to be with a partner to be part of pride. So I don't know, I guess it also means love, like love each other, allyship, all that. But I think it's just a little too corny for me. I like just pride and a rainbow and that's good. I immediately took that as like loving people for who they are, right? So the all around aspect, not partners. But even then it's like, do we need to say that? Pride is is already saying that. Yeah, it's a little too much. Like, (laughs) a little too much. So it's like Um, a double, like we don't, it's too much. We don't need all that. There is a sweater or sweatshirt, I should say, that I really love that's not a spirit jersey. It's a classic gray, heather gray type of sweatshirt that you Mm -hmm. would see with a classic Mickey standing with his arms on his hips or his waist. But this one, they just added some rainbow to it. So his shoes and his uh, trousers go into the rainbow color spectrum. And then there's a Disney logo on the sleeve with rainbow and that, oh my God, that might be my favorite one because it looks so it much like cute. the classic and it just has a little extra. Yeah. I could see you rocking that one too. That's yeah. like totally a mic purchase. And the sleeve, the Disney um, like font that they use, we don't get to see that very often. It's that D that kind of looks like a G, isn't it? Yeah, like the one that's you know on like, the old Disney <laughs> like logo home videos from the movies. or something. Yep, yeah, from the home videos, yeah. Yep. We don't get to see that one too often. So that's really cool that they, they chose that too. Love it. Um, what else do they have here? I also love, so I am a bit more obnoxious with my clothing, my clothing options. So I also love the spirit, no, the sport jersey it's called. So it's like literally looks like a baseball jersey. Um, and they have the giant castle on the back and the um, they just have like kind of rainbows all over the place. So it's black based also, which I do love that like contrast and color yeah. and then they have um like a rainbow uh cuff around the edge of it they have the dlr with little rainbows on it and the part i like the most for some reason is on the sleeve it's just the like the disney d like the disneyland d right yeah and then the rainbows inside like the gap in the middle of the d and for some reason i just love it i just love rainbows like, give me all the rainbows <laughs> it's fine <laughs> yeah and it's different it's different that the fill-in of the whole of the d is the rainbow yeah, it's very cute. I actually just want that D. like on a shirt on its own, even though it's, it's good, like a good little patch or something. Mm-hmm. I like the sportiness of it. And I can see you wearing that, especially like back in the raver days. Yeah, like, I would like, die like, if they had this when I was a yeah. raver. You yeah. know, shout out to my friend Christy. Me and her often talk about um like things we would have loved if we were a raver still, like, or like, you know, back in the day, like, oh, if they had this back then, you know, like those kind of moments. Yeah. Um, and also she recently took her little one. He's just, just over two years old, took him to drag queen brunch. Ooh. So they got to do in story time. So they got to do a little pride outing already. And she bought him a little raver jacket that said, love is love and all this stuff all over. And I was like, oh my gosh, he's like our little raver baby. Like so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Very, very cute. What else I got on here? Let's see. I like oh, the I... that some of these, including that that sports jersey that you like, they have a Disneyland one, DLR, and then Disney World, WDW. Because not often yep, anymore do they do specific. Sometimes it's just Disney parks. Love that. Yep, yep. Do the, are the castles different too? I got to peek. I got to peek at that. You get it. Generic I think castle. The same. I don't know. Generic castle. It's okay. Is it? That's okay. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it it's like neither, right? It's just like a castle. Yeah, it's just like this one that maybe is the combination of both of them together. Maybe I don't know. A Give them that from yeah. Pro. Shop Pro. <laughs> uh, they even got like the other brands involved. So Star Wars. I think they had this one before, but it's really standing out now because there's a black T-shirt with one, two, three, four, five, six lightsabers from red to purple. 
Yes, mm -hmm. I love that one too. That's I've nice. I've seen that before. However, the funniest thing about it, and I'm not sure if this is correct. I think I saw it on like T Public, like a fan made oh, one. Oh, I wouldn't. So they be like surprised. ripped someone's spine yep. <laughs> up and made it into their own. I think I'm. I I can't the say for sure, but I'm almost <laughs> sure that that was not a Disney design starting. I could picture it like on an Instagram ad for a maker. Yeah, like someone who was yeah, making it. Yeah, yep. I think so. And that's heck funny. Uh, here's another shirt I can see you buying. And you might be like, girl, I would never wear that. But it's a button up collared shirt. Do you see that one? It's like kind of yes. like a cruisy, yep. like you'd wear on a cruise. Very cruise ship. Yep. Uh, and it's kind of subtle. It's like all over the place, but it's not like big, loud, giant font, but it's like little Mickey heads that are rainbow throughout the entire show. I actually definitely print. would wear that. It reminds me of, there's a lot of like Bonobos shirts like that. They're mm -hmm. kind of lightweight. They're pretty comfortable, button up. You could wear it without a shirt underneath if you want. And this one's like a dark navy blue with polka dots. When And then when you look close, the polka dots are the rainbow Mickey heads. Yep. I could see yes. them selling this on Disney Cruise Line. Like if you need something right. to, to go to Remy's or a dress up place, <laughs> you just get that real quick. That is cute. Um, there's another shirt too that has the um, Mickey. Where is it normally? I keep wanting to say World of Color, but I think it was on the roller coaster, the Incredible Coaster or oh. something. Or did it used to be on the Mickey's Fun Wheel? Where was that? It's like the big classic <laughs> Mickey head with the sunburst behind it. That's that like from was like World of on Color. The on the Mickey's Fun Wheel, yeah. Wait, okay. it's not there anymore. <laughs> It's Pixar Pal around now, so I don't think so, right? Oh, Where do we see right. that? You're right. I think they now just project it on during World of Color. <laughs> I was like, where am I seeing that? I yep. don't feel like it's gone. That's hilarious. But Weird. this one, they have the sunburst with like rainbow sunbursts instead of just like the uh, yellow. That's a good one. Just cute. Nice little twist and it's tasteful. Oh, another place but, where, where that came from before the fun wheel is those like those old classic cartoons. They yes. show it in the beginning. Yeah. Was it not World of Color? Maybe not, huh? I feel like it still is. I think if it's really gone off the fun wheel, which it probably is, they at no, least No, I mean like the World it. of Color TV show. Oh, oh, probably. Yeah, probably. I can't remember. I could be wrong. And they did it back then. It was a style. Like even like Porky Pig, all those yes. type of things had. Like yeah. Non-Disney. That's all, folks. <laughs> Ta -da -da. <laughs> um, And then my... Favorite, favorite thing that I actually just shout out to all my friends that I reached out to to grab one of these for me in the park because I just need to have it. I don't even use mugs, but this freaking mug is so cute. It's like white on the outside, blue on the inside, and it says pride with Mickey. And then the Disneyland is like the classic Disneyland font with like stars around it, all rainbow. And then the actual handle is a is a rainbow, like the arch shape that you hold on to is like literally a rainbow itself so cute. and then the inside of the cup when you are done drinking there's a castle at the bottom and it's just freaking adorable so i need it in my life so very cute the <laughs> rainbow handle gives me like 80s vibes like lisa yes Frank, it, does, it is Bright, very yeah. retro looking yeah for sure i they forgot good, to mention that, that yes they yeah it's like chunky one. like i also love chunky rainbow stuff like the i love both like neon rainbow and like bold rgb color rainbows right like that that style and the old 80s chunky look oh, i love it so it's kind of got all of it yeah. on one cut for me <laughs> and i also like about most of the merch this year i mean mm -hmm. no hate intended but they're i love that they're using the classic pride rainbow with just rgb roy g biv because sometimes uh, the brown, black, or the blue, white, and pink, sometimes it just throws it off when from a design perspective. So I like they that they still have that. both of them yeah. on here, but a lot of the newer merch, yeah, has. And then especially, the I think classic. one re one way they get away with it, especially on the mug, is if it is supposed to be a rainbow as the object, then that's the rainbow. Too bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> That is actually uh, a rainbow. But that's funny because it is something that the whole LGBTQIA plus community, so many arguments on Reddit about the flag because it just keeps getting more and more complex. And they're like, wait, I thought the original one represented everybody already. So that's a hot topic. So it's interesting to see from a design perspective, like how do you get around that? Ugh. Right, right. It is interesting. There, I see one of them on here with this horrible pink t-shirt. Like <laughs> why do they pick the ba the base color to be that? horrible pink i don't know 
but the, it has the the entire rainbow with all the different colors like you're mentioning but the the background like just make it black i guess they can't because there's a the edge of the that flag is black but they could have made like a thin white outline around it or something then you know like and then you could have a black base but that pink shirt is gonna make me crazy i can't with that <laughs> yeah it is weird and it has yeah because the it has the pink, blue, white transgender flag on the bottom of the Mickey silhouette. It blends into the pink shirt, and it's yeah, that like, part looks great with the pink shirt. But the rest of it, like, I don't know. Yeah. That's just my opinion. I'm sorry if you guys love it and have purchased it already. It's just like <laughs> I can't, I can't wear pink, so that's why I don't like it. I just want everything to be black or like dark, bold colors. I can't do any pastel. <laughs> so. I'll give the prize to the most unexpected pride merch is the spider bot. Um, <laughs> yeah from the web web slingers ride <laughs> it's i love cute, though on, it's so cute it is I very cute in the it. merchandise website when you're on disney store if you hover over it i love that it like shows it what it looks like with the lights off <laughs> it's like look the eyes glow <laughs> oh i just did it right now i'm seeing it now <laughs> it's kind of cute yeah i like that which by the way funny. yes so shop disney by the way rebranded over the last couple of months back to disney store so I don't know if this is a Bob Iger thing or what, but they were like, Oh yeah, it was Shop what? Disney before. I didn't even yep. catch that. Shop Disney's completely gone and they've gone back to Disney store, despite the fact that the physical Disney stores are still pretty much going away. I mean, I guess they can now absorb that property into yeah. their online stuff. I prefer it. I but I was just getting Disney. used to Shop Disney, but this makes more sense, just Disney store. <laughs> yeah, that's cute. That's cute. Okay. Okay. I'll okay. Okay. Okay, well, good job on the merchandise this year, Disney. We like it. Very loving happy. It, it. Um, and then I wanted to ask you, because you are currently in Mexico, and yeah. I wanted to know, what does Mexico do for Pride? What is Pride like out there? Do you know? Are Ooh, you doing yeah, anything? Yeah, I'll tell you What's all the like? things. So, yes. first of all, coming into Pride Month, um, it's just a really good time in Mexico for diversity and for change. So we... I should I shouldn't say we because I'm not even a citizen yet, but Mexico has just elected the first female president of the country. Oh my goodness! I yep. can't. Amazing. And awesome. um, the cool thing was leading up to the election, which happened on Sunday this past Sunday. Um, regardless of which party you stood for, it was a woman versus a woman. So we are getting a woman president. No matter. Oh, that's what. heck of cool! So yeah. you're able to like get excited yep. about that way earlier. Oh totally. my gosh! Wow. Yep. Um, so we have a woman president and so that like kicked off pride month and then pride itself happens pretty much all of the month of June. There's two pride weekends here in Guadalajara specifically. The first one coming up is more for marching and politics. And then the following one is more about like the parade and like the corporate brands and the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm just exhausted with stuff. So I'm actually more excited this year about just the fun one. <laughs> and yeah, like, I don't yeah. want to march or complain about anything, but you know, good for that. <laughs> Gay rights. Yes, of course, it's important, but I'm excited about just seeing how they do like the fun parade and all that and the parties. So yeah, I mean, so we have two nothing wrong with being up. excited about a big party. <laughs> yeah. right? Especially first time, for that. like want to see how they do it here. And then on top of it, Guadalajara is also nicknamed by a lot of gays as Guadalajara. So it's already super gay. It's almost like the San Francisco of Mexico in comparison to the US. So yeah, I'm expecting them to do it up and can't wait to see nice. what happens. Yeah. Oh, I want to see it. Maybe you yeah. can uh, share some of it with us, Disney Hollywood. Yeah, I should. <gasps> yeah, it'll be fun. Um, well, I'm excited to hear that you're going, even if it's just for the party one, because that's <laughs> probably where I would be too. Let's be real. I should be at both as well, but you know, I'm also tired and right. old <laughs> and probably won't even go to the party one, but like, you know, it's okay. <laughs> same, same. That's my plan. The other thing I committed to with Jerry was let's at least once per week, check out a gay bar because we haven't really gone to them since we've lived here. It's been a few months now. Um, they just, they party hard here and they start late. Uh, a lot of countries right outside of the U S they start late. So like you eat dinner around like seven or eight and then the clubs and bars don't open till like 11. Mm. And if they don't open till 11, you're still, if you get there at 11, 15, you're that loser standing there and it's still empty. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, yeah, you gotta show up like midnight early. Right? So, and that means like the drag shows don't start till like one. So we have to oh like- Oh my God, really... they'll start till one? Yep, yep. You gotta plan ahead for it. Wait, do We're I need to old. move to Mexico? Because that means probably most fun people are night owls by That's default, true. right? I do appreciate the night owlness. Yeah. But I've learned that, I, yes, I'm a night owl, but it's kind of at home. It's still kind of exhausting to be up and out at like 1 a.m. Right, yeah. I think if you were with me and other night owls, it might be different. Right. Oh, my gosh. You have to come visit. That's heck come cool. Come visit, yeah. What's the um, alcohol time? Do they have like a, like, you know, here's like 2 a.m. in California? From my cutoff. experience, there is no cutoff. Okay. And I think the drinking age here is 18. Yeah, because we used to go to Tijuana oh, from yeah, LA that's right. to yep. go drink. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember you could go to like four or five in the morning. So there might be a cutoff, but it's just super late. Yeah, like New York is 4 a.m., right? I think there's New York's pretty four. late. Yeah. Vegas is 24 hours. So maybe it's like that. I don't know. Oh, but one other either. cool thing about how seriously they take their elections here for this recent presidential election. First of all, they, did, they do it on Sundays on purpose so everybody can go was just seems very pretty obvious thoughtful. right like why not come on usa and then um mexico's yeah so they do it on sundays and then they stop the selling of beer and alcohol the saturday before all the way through the end of the weekend that threw me off at first i was like they don't want drunk people at the polls so i don't know what that means but it's, it's just another step where they're saying ah. like, everyone needs to focus this weekend and get to the polls. like don't get wasted and sleep through it yeah exactly. <laughs> And a lot of businesses close here. early on Sundays too for the election specifically. So wow, interesting. Pretty That's cool. an interesting. Uh, I want to know the actual reasoning behind it, like the full story of that. Yeah, me too. Very curious. All right. Well, sounds fun. Um, but let's move on over to the Disneyland Resort. We just have a couple park updates that I found a little interesting, and I thought I would share them with you guys if you haven't seen it already. But a um, couple cool things. One in DCA, we have uh, a new portion, like a new little short is going on before the World of Color show. It's a little pre-show called Emotional Roller Coaster. And it's basically a promotional time for Inside Out 2. Because that is coming up very Ooh, soon as well. Yeah. Um, so that's cute. You get to see like a little trailer almost before you're ready for your uh, World of Color showing. Um, and then another piece of information over or news in DCA is that Club Pixar is canceled. And this was like a quick Ouch. cancel. They announced it to the cast members, like I think the day before or something like this is going to be your wow. last show and that's it. And it's over. And the fun, the reason I wanted to mention this is because I didn't like look super deep into it because I was so annoyed. Every outlet is saying something completely different. And I'm so tired of people coming up with their reasoning behind why they think that Disney canceled said event and posting it as factual. I'm just over it. Like I can't with it. Always. So there's all yeah. these things going clickbait, on. Clickbait, clickbait. Yes, it's all clickbait, but there's like just a million different reasons floating around the internet. So whatever it is, I was quite surprised to see it because it's like the Pixar Fest isn't going on for that long. It's going on for a couple months. So it is a little bit of time. But it doesn't seem like long enough to like revamp everything or pull a whole show or do anything because they they have that whole area going on in Hollywood backlot. So it's almost like they have to do something else there in the meantime. The one thing that I did see somebody say online, again, this is all opinion and thoughts and like whatever you want to call it, theories. But the one thing that I agree with is that the timing of Club Pixar is too late for kids and it's too corny for adults. <laughs> yeah. I like the way that was stated because that was exactly how I felt. Like it was nighttime. It was like club vibes. Like they had the lights going on. There's like three kids dancing. And then there's a bunch of adults in the backdrop, probably all wanting to do stuff. Like there's a bunch of us adults way back behind all the seating doing the little dances, but like all just kind of not really feeling it. So it's like if they did something a little cooler that could get, adults into it because it's a, it's late at night you know so yeah. like i don't know what the reasoning is but that was it was alarming to hear like a big change already come in and cut out of and it's the already seemed like offering, so. based on your review and many others on social media it was the one that was not the most well received because it was highly anticipated to be like electronica yeah oh yeah 
and then that's it another thing is like else. did people pump that up for each other absolutely <laughs> yeah. like you know disney Club never said Pixar. it was gonna be that like, yeah all right. you know what would be so like cool a little what if they surprised us with they bring it back for the last couple of weeks and it is like that no right no, that I would be super it, cool nice. <laughs> that would be super cool but i think they already told all those cast members that they're they don't have like that portion of their job right now so Yikes. like i don't know and Anyways, there's performers on stage weird. right doing the like dances and yeah there's only like i mean i'm sure there's a lot of people that have to control the lighting and the sound and the background all that stuff Good too point. but as far as performers there's i think there's only like six people on stage and a dj so like 10 under 10 people involved probably wow. in that show oh, so interesting but anyway, moving on over, uh, Downtown Disney had an update with its entrance, which I I don't know if I'm just out of the loop. I didn't even realize they were doing this. <laughs> Most of the comments I saw were like, did they do this overnight? Yeah, yeah. I was like, wait, and where? And I, I can't still even can't understand really figure out where it is. Where it is. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea where it is. Like, I couldn't understand the context of it. It looked like maybe, is it closer to Pixar? hotel because it looks pixar -y. I don't know I think it's like so have you hmm, I don't think you've even seen you haven't seen the new like mid-century modern looking little DJ platform they built right oh not yet just in pictures okay yeah so if you go all the way down to downtown Disney close to where you exit the bag check where it used to be and go to into the, the Disneyland hotel like kind of the monorail area they put this new little stage off to the side and there's this big grass area where you can like picnic out and then they're, they're building the market and Din Tai Fung right over there. So both of them are like side by side. Oh, okay. But they're not completed yet, right? That's, I think it's right between the two of those where the entrance now is at the backdrop of that. So you come in through the back, which is also closer to downtown Disney parking. So that's quite oh, nice that you don't have to walk okay. now all the way through the side of downtown or the Disneyland Hotel to get to the bag check. So it's closer for that. Um, and I've never paid much attention. Like if when, when we walk from... Disneyland Hotel back to downtown Disney. I've never paid attention to the transition. Before. Right. So. From the Disneyland Hotel. Yeah, you go through that giant sorcerer hat, which is kind of cool. Oh, okay. I'm picturing it now. Very yeah. Hollywood Studios, the old yeah, one. And then you cross yeah. the street, I think. Like there's an actual street there, which is also weird. Okay. Cross the street and then there's bag check. That's how it used to be. So now it's all over the side. It is very cute. It's very Palm Springs. It's very mid-century modern. It's got the like thin silver lettering, very wide set lettering across the top. It says downtown Disney. And then the, they uh, have- Kerneling is real wide. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Kerning. What'd you say? Kerneling? Cur 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 curdling. I always thought it was kernel. <laughs> kernel. I'm pretty kernel. sure it's kerning. But you right. go through- the bag check now and i don't know why everyone has to mention this but the restrooms are right there when you get through the bag check but every single thing i saw somebody posted like oh my god you go bag check and the restrooms are right there i'm like yay isn't that always that? for every gate? yeah like when yeah. you come down from mickey and friends there's restrooms right there when yeah. you when you get into know. dca or disneyland it's right there after the very weird i don't know why that's a highlight but they did <laughs> redesign the restroom and it is also very mid-century modern it reminds me of the old newark california post office thank you very much what very, i like, didn't know it looked white, like that at one blocky. point blocky yeah. oh, wow. i will say what i'm disappointed in is they put more permanent bag check tables and security um walkthroughs which indicates they are no they have no plans in putting in the the newer style where you just walk right. through yeah right and and in the same vein at DCA, they did have a couple of the turnstiles removed recently, and this new style was put in. I guess they were testing, and it was. It almost looked like nobody really knows what it did. It seems like, but what it looked like is like you can validate your own thing, like it does facial recognition. Oh, like yeah. you know they do that at some airports now. Yeah, you can do facial recognition to your annual pass, I guess, or your ticket or whatever it is, and then you get to go through. So it's supposed to be quicker, and now it's it's gone. They removed that too. Oh. So. The, so we're like, oh, are we going back to the old one? And we're thinking about it. You know, people are talking about it online saying like, I can't imagine that guests can do this any faster than anyone working at the turnstile. I'm like, yeah, it's going to probably slow down Fine, a lot. That's if you fair. Do all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Even at but like the, the airport. Check, though, like they have in Disney World, that they have already 
Yeah. Figured out. Let's do it. What's going you on? Just walk right through. And then they just pull you aside if they notice something weird through the scanner. Mm-hmm. And I am shocked that they still don't have this in Disneyland. And it is such a problem. Like it's a turnoff. I'll see people, a lot of people <laughs> on social media love to post how crowded it is. Just yes. fine. I get it. Like it gets people to like react, but it turns me off. I'm just like, oh my God, I do not want to go there right now. Like the right. bag check lines are so long. How could they not solve that problem? Bummer. I know. Yeah. You know what? I'm actually guilty of doing that. I often post when it's empty. I get real excited. I'd rather see that. Off. Yeah. That gets me all I am up. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the best feeling. And I'm really trying to sell like staying till closing. So I'm like, look at how beautiful Disneyland is after the fireworks. There's nobody here. The whole place is yours. However, I have seen people posting just what you're saying. People posting all these crowd things and people are faking it. They'll find photos. Like they'll just happen to capture an area where there's like, it's like empty and they'll post it. And it's like really not a good day. (laughs) You could frame anything you want. Technically. People got to ruin it. Yep. Always got to ruin it. (laughs) <laughs> um anyways back in downtown disney didn't i fung it looks like it's almost ready to go it's like really done up super nicely um parkside market is like getting built very quickly it's still definitely like only the frame going on but it like looks like it's getting built really quick really quick and it made me take another look at the concept art because i wasn't really excited about it before but i do like these markets like the one you and i went to in brooklyn Every single booth yeah. is delicious. Nice. Like everything is good. You can find smaller bites, which is nice for people like me who just like to have snacks all the time rather than full meals. Like I love stuff like that. So I'm actually getting more excited about this. And I didn't even notice that they have a rooftop bar. Which is going to be heck of cool to have in downtown nice. Disney. That's super cool. Yeah. It's very adult also, yeah. right? Like, so I got I like even more excited about that market when I looked at it again. So that's pretty And with cool. those markets, if you are with a group, you could like break out, get what you want, and then meet back up at the table right. and eat what yeah. you want. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Food court turned bougie, basically. Yep. Exactly. So over in Disneyland, I just saw Disneyland post about this the other day, and I didn't even realize that Galaxy's Edge is five years old. Wow. Does that feel weird? Wow. It's one of those things where it's both already five and then I'm like only five at the same time. Like I feel both things at the same time. It felt very like, oh my God, time is just flying. Like just flying. In fact, someone just, I think it was Jeff Bam. If anybody knows Jeff Bam, uh, he posted, (laughs) this is so sidebar, but it threw me off too. Doritos Locos Tacos from Taco Bell are 15 years stop, old. Stop, stop. I knew you were going to say a long time. Oh my gosh. 15. 15. Like where, what have we been doing this whole yeah. time? Just time is just flying. It's crazy. Um. Anyways, back to Disneyland. Oh my God, I'm getting very sidetracked. Um, They also announced that the West End side of Disneyland is going to be having a closure. And what does that mean? That means because Tiana's Bayou Adventure is like getting closer, they need to do what? I'm not sure with this whole area, but they need to close down the many ventures away. The Pooh, Hungry Bear Restaurant, all the stores and snack carts in the area and the West entrance to Galaxy's Edge. So that is now a dead end again, right? We used to, that yeah. used to be a dead end back to that. Um, and then in addition to that, they are also closing Davy Crockett Canoes. So what do you think is going on over there? Have you seen more about this? I only saw the like official Disneyland announcement and they really like tried to fluff up each of those things that you mentioned like they'd be like hungry bear restaurants closing and then they'd fluff it up by all the places you could go to instead and it really just said like they're just you know reimagining the area in preparation for tiana's uh, right what's we're introduction or something so i don't know maybe they're just new orleansing it a little bit more i did notice that they were very clear though about pooh's corner staying as is so that you can still get your hundred acre wood treats and tigger tails. Cause there was a lot of complaints about that store turning into Ray's something, but it's still going to be half oh, and half. It's going to be half and half. Right. Yeah. yeah. Which it kind of already was. It was half slash mountain, half poo. So poo will still be there. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Good question. Yeah. The part that threw me off the most is that they're closing down the canoes, not to me, but they didn't say any of the river boats are getting closed down. So I'm kind of like, 
what's going on? Do they need to extend? Yeah. Are they changing the like pathways over there at all? Are they extending them out? Or like, what's going on with? Why do they have to shut down the? Community? Oh, I see what you mean. Like weird. anticipating big crowds coming into the former yeah. Splash Mountain area, Critter Country. The entrance for affect- the canoes is like after you go over that hill to see the log splashing, Yeah, it's right? like really far away. Yeah. Okay. So I guess it like it's in Critter Country. Yes. The beginning of the queue. It reminds me of when I play this game, Roller Coaster Tycoon, and I make the queue so long that it's in another land, but I need to to accommodate the people. <laughs> <laughs> and in yeah. my mind, I think it I think I overthink it when I play these simulation games. I'm like, oh, these little people are gonna get confused because they're gonna be like, why am I boarding this thing in one land but exiting somewhere else? And I think about that in these themes. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's a good imaginary <laughs> brain right there. Like there you that. go. I am disappointed that uh, they're they're going to close that entrance to Galaxy's Edge, though, because that is going to be a cluster F all over again. Yeah. Right? And you can I was only like, I exit. Hope they through like one place. close it far back also, like to the entrance of Rise, because there's nothing to see after that. So, like, if they like let right. you walk all the way down and then you get cut oh. off, I'd be super annoyed. Like, listen. yeah, just to see the trees and like hear the ambiance and then the yeah. dead end. <laughs> Oof. yeah because yeah. there's quite a walk yeah. in between the point a to point b on for the entrance to the exit there um but yeah so i thought that was interesting they're closing it off i didn't realize they were going to but I guess they had like there's got to be something going on if they're closing all that stuff off they wouldn't just do that for you to not look at it or something you know what right. i mean like, yeah so like is it is just it? a refurb or is it adding i don't know changing yeah don't know i guess it's not too long it's already june so i guess you know there's they promise to open by the end of the year and they can always extend it but like it's actually not super long for them to do a whole lot anyway so oh, you know what also haunted mansion is still down so like that whole that mm-hmm. whole side is just yep. dead that's yeah it's a whole lot of stuff closed down they're like dead no in the point, water i guess it's just fantastic <laughs> Like a dead Excuse end me. for Phantasmic, and then that's yeah, kind of bad, yeah, but... <laughs> that's crazy. And Harbor Galley to get your cookies, just saying. Yeah, yeah, that's cookie. Oh, the lobster rolls. I don't know. Oh, that might be actually part of the announcements that are closed because it's further down. That little. No, it didn't. It didn't say Harbor oh, Galley. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, get your lobster rolls. Go to Phantasmic. Right there, you go. Yep. That's right. Um, so yeah, so I'm curious to see if they're going to do anything else cool, um, with the area there, or if you said just a refurb. Seems like too long for a reefer, but too short for anything major. So we'll have to see. I'm not sure if anybody else knows any more skinny on that. If you got the skinny, got give the us skinny. A, also, give before we uh, move on past Tiana's, I have caved and I've watched everything uh- <laughs> from the Walt Disney World Magic Kingdom previews of Tiana's Bayou Adventure. I think what what made me cave was the fact that Disney World posted the entire POV yeah. ride to get ahead of everyone yep. else, I think. So I was like, fine. And I just keep seeing it. People aren't putting any warnings. Like you can just keep seeing it in my feed. So I just finally watched the whole thing so that I'm not seeing it just disjointed. <laughs> um, and, you know, it never compares, right? You have to get on the ride and feel it and hear it right. all around you. So I'm I'm reserving my opinions on it until I ride it. But I know a lot of people are already coming up with their own opinions just from watching the video. And I'm like, ah, I don't know. I don't like that. Just wa- write it yeah. first. Yeah, exactly. And that, what you just said is the exact reason why I don't like spoilers. Like out of all the other yeah. things, it's not just like the story or whatever. It's, it's because you can't like, you'll never experience something until you've done it correctly. Right. Yeah. So like, that's why I like to wait and just do it because like, now I'm going to think like, oh, I already know this is coming or what. I don't know. It just like kind of. Sits yeah, it's off very I have out of seen context. a lot of stuff already, even myself. And I've yeah. barely been on social media recently. So I'm just like, ah, <laughs> oh, even I'm like catching it still. It's just everywhere, you know? Yeah. It's so. like watching, um, like I like watching cooking competitions. You can never taste or smell the food. So only the judges can judge it and you can just only observe it. That's and very true. It's kind of the same. Like you just have to wait and write it. And the way they describe it is like, listen, <laughs> yeah. they like have all these crazy ways to describe food. I'm like, I guess it still doesn't make me taste it from over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, one day there should be a future where 
that feels like Willy Wonka or something where you can yeah. taste and smell it. The yes, food. please. Ooh, That'd so be cool. super cool. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So since we're talking about Tiana's, Tiana's Bayou Adventure, of course, that makes me think of Splash Mountain, which also makes me think of the reason why it was removed, which was that it was themed on Song of the South, which was a band movie. So I just had a moment where I was like, you know what? What other band Disney movies have there been? Like, I oh, bet you there's stuff I don't know about. And there was a lot. Not, not really? a ton. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Take that back. There's not a ton, but most of them I did not know about. <laughs> More than you probably expected. Yeah. The, the yeah, one like that I did not we know. think of is Song, Song in the South. Yeah, exactly. So there's quite a few. And they aren't, none of them were banned here other than Song of the South. I'll say that straight up in the United States. So oh. these are other countries. And I'll tell you about the reasons why behind them. But I thought it'd be fun to kind of like make this into not a game, but a conversation yeah. to just see if you know why these movies were banned. Um, So the first one on the list is Lightyear that only came out maybe five years ago at this point, right? Was yep. it too long ago? Already knew that one was controversial. Yes, it's controversial. Yeah. Do you know why? Uh, Because there was a not only a same sex kiss, but I think also just a, a lesbian mom or something. I haven't seen it. Shame on me and other Pixar movies. Me either. I haven't seen. And it's Chris Evans voicing uh, Buzz Lightyear. You'd think we would have seen it, but I don't know. It just didn't appeal to me and not because of the gay theme at all. It just didn't appeal to me. But um, I remember them talking about it being banned like in Asia and maybe some other countries. Yes. So this one was banned in several Middle Eastern countries, including Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Arabia, (laughs) uh, Egypt, and Iraq. Um, And then also it was uh, banned in Malaysia. Mm. So specifically Malaysia. No, it didn't say anything about other countries um, in that area, but just interesting. And it is because of the same-sex relationship. You were correct. I remember one thing that um, is a positive when that was happening was that some of the countries that demanded they cut it mm-hmm. if they are going to distribute it there, Disney said, no, we are not cutting it. Oh, nice. Um, whether or not, so it meant they would have lost business in some of those countries. So yeah, yeah. You know, good on them. It's hard to make those decisions. I was thinking about that while I was reading through this list, like, oh man, these companies really have to think about what they want to, A, the story they want to tell, be the inclusivity they want to project and their sales like it all it all has this weird combo of like figuring out what they want to do about that right yeah. it's like <laughs> so it's many things of interest for sure. yes exactly yep. i and i the way i see it is if we're exporting a product and in this case it's a movie or entertainment it was made in america and it's like american values so too bad if you want to right. import it, you got to get what we get, what we get. Right. <laughs> um, it is disappointing too. I think a majority of things that are on this list here are because of same sex relationships. So yeah. it's unfortunate and it's interesting timing because it's pride when I decided to bring this up, but it also brings up the topic, right? And it is good to hear that Disney did have the community's back on that. That's really yeah. cool. So. It's so true. These are good examples of why people still need to go out and march and talk about it's it true. and representation. Mm-hmm. I would say one thing that stresses me out as a Disney holic in June is the comments. There's mm. just so many mean comments in these posts, whether it's the official brands posting something like happy pride or one of our favorite social media influencers, the comments, and I get caught up. Like I need to just not go into the comments, but I go in and I argue with like all these stupid trolls. I shouldn't do it. They're, I'm just getting baited into it. Uh, but if you look at the comments and how hateful it still is, that's the exact reason why we need to create a safe space like mm-hmm. Pride Night. It's why we need representation. So yeah, yeah. I, that's good full circle for, you know, we talked about Pride at the beginning of the episode. It is. Mm-hmm. And myself being just an ally, I sometimes feel like I'm like, oh, am I like trespassing the borders of like getting too into this because I'm not, you know, part of the actual community in that way, but for an ally I am. And then you think more about what you just said. And that is super important because sometimes you need people that identify the same way you do to help them understand things. 
right? Yeah. Like if they already are homophobic and they hear from a gay guy that they need to not be, they might not listen. But if they hear from a straight person that you know identifies the same way they do, then they might listen a little bit more. So yes. it is allyship important. is so important. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is. So like, you know, maybe we all need to go there and bash down some trolls on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I mean, half the time I'm thinking. I bet you this person doesn't even believe this. They just want a reaction. But there are times That's where true, yeah. I go down the rabbit hole and I start going through their Instagram and I'm like, gosh, yeah, they really are that person. Yeah, that yeah. It sucks. It is. And it, that, that creates a lot of anxiety too. So yeah, do it to your own discretion. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> keep yourself mentally healthy as well in the meantime. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I'll just run through these other ones because there's another couple that are also the same reasoning, but I want to mention them. So Beauty and the Beast that came out in 2017 was banned, which I did not know. The live oh, the, action. The live movie. action. Mm-hmm. Yep. La So this is uh-huh. banned in Kuwait. And uh, and it was it says only Kuwait, which is super weird, but uh-huh. whatever. So it was banned in Kuwait for depicting Le Fou as, as gay. Um, oh, and then in Russia, it didn't get banned. However, it got a 16 plus rating. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. So like, it's okay to have a gay guy. However, it's only for the adult, <laughs> the other like kind of adult, right. <laughs> almost adult community. <laughs> the funny thing I owe my argument to that is usually if I was, if I grew up being bombarded with straight relationships and I still ended up gay, I doubt your kid's going to turn gay from seeing one gay. I love that. Oh, that's like good. I've never heard anyone say that. It's like, hello. Yeah. Just that's doesn't work really that way. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it just doesn't. It's just not how we're built. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Um, Onward, just like Lightyear, uh, it was also banned in Saudi Arabia. And this is because of some throwaway comment about Spectre's girlfriend. So like, oh, the oh com- no, it was yeah. like a quick comment. And they banned it in a whole country. So I whatever. vaguely remember that. Yep. Eternals. This film was built in, uh, banned in China, Saudi Arabia. Well, I can't say Saudi Arabia today. Tongue twister. Saudi, Saudi, because I keep saying Saudi. What am I doing? <laughs> Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, uh, Qatar, and Oman. And this is due to having the MCU's first openly gay hero, which was at Pride Night last time. I bet they're going to be back. Very cute. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That um, one was cool then- because they they wrote it in without any, like, flashiness. It was just, oh, he happens to have a husband and a kid. And that's how right. it is. Yeah, that's it was a good one. just it. Uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness was banned in the same countries because there was a queer lead character and she had two moms. Oh, America Sings. What was her name? America Sings. <laughs> America Chavez. America Chavez. Um, but another weird banning moment that was weird for this movie was this was banned in China. However, it was not banned for the same reasons in China. In this article, at least, it says it was banned for including a yellow newspaper box for the Epoch Times, which is blocked in mainland China. What? I don't even fully understand it. Like that that media outlet, Epoch Times, is yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay. And they said yellow newspaper box. So I was confused too if it's the yellow newspaper box that's blocked or, or the I think it's together. <laughs> I think they have like their their branded maybe. Thing. And so they ban the whole movie. They're like, screw that. This is not happening here because wow. I'm not allowed. That's here. interesting. I wonder if there were any issues with um wreck it ralph because there was a lot of references to like facebook and twitter which are also banned oh, yeah. over there but i can't remember if they use the actual logo or it was are they state. banned there in china yeah they have oh. their own version instead where they can monitor it da, 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 da. Oh, that's so creepy yeah. um no no uh surprise here i don't even know how to say this because it's in german but it's d-e-r der is it Der? Der. Der. Fewer, der. Fewer's face, right? Is that how you pronounce it? Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this was a 1943 propaganda film with Donald Duck. Um, and this was banned in Russia on the grounds that it endorsed extremist behavior, which to me is just like, wait. Interesting. What? <laughs> Only Russia banned it for that? I want, what, do you know the context? Like, was it saying, was showing Hitler because he's bad or 
it, like why it was like oh man i wish i could remember it. i don't even want to say it because i can't remember it well enough but i remember there was a lot of um there's a whole section of this in the walt disney family museum too but yes it depicted nazis and whatnot in it and uh and hitler himself was in it um and it was, and I it always was like saw it more as like, propaganda. So yeah. were, it was negative against Hitler, but right. it was like supporting our troops who were going over to the World yes. War II stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fascinating that Russia banned that. I know. And if, I just, I can't with that. So, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like having a hard time understanding that one. Uh, next up is Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest. This one was banned in China um for violent content and its depiction of a supernatural oh that That's makes me think of one time i believe we did a something about mystic manor origin story on the podcast and how they didn't do haunted mansion because of that yeah right like yep. ghosts and supernatural were yep. not popular or not good so they did it something di completely different. So that makes sense. Wow. Interesting. Right. And this next one, I don't, I wish I could find more information on this, but Mary Poppins was also banned in China. And it says that it's banned due to the fact that it combined live action and animation. And the only thing I could think out of this is that a long time ago, even longer ago than Mary Poppins, but there was an era where people did not understand technology upgrades and they were scared of it. Do you know what the instrument, the theremin is? Yeah. There's a whole crazy history on that instrument. Like the guy got arrested and all sorts of crazy witchcraft. stuff. Witchcraft. Like, it's witchcraft. Yeah, it's like looked at as witchcraft. So I'm wondering if that was why China didn't want this live action animation cross contamination. What is that? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, like we see it now with AI, people freaking out about turning. Yeah, things, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Weird. That's an interesting one. That's an iceberg there. Even just yeah, like China in general. More to these. And why do they ban certain things? Right, <laughs> yeah. right. Maybe that one's for another podcast. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then the last one to have been banned was Christopher Robin in 2018. Do you have any idea why this was banned? That was banned because talking stuffed animals in live action is evil. <laughs> I think it is. It was quite creepy for some reason. I didn't even watch it. I didn't watch I it. I didn't watch it either. And I love Ewan McGregor. I don't know why I didn't watch <laughs> yeah, it. <laughs> and Winnie the Pooh. I just, like, it looked kind of like somber or something. It didn't look. Yeah, it looked sad. Happy. Like every all the... Yeah, I did. It was like all gray all the time. Yeah. Right? And I he's mean, like guess, grown up. I guess they're brown. British, right? They're in England and <laughs> yeah, it's so kind of gray all the time. <laughs> but something about it just, it looked like it just didn't, I didn't have the energy to watch it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but so this one was banned in China. It was not because the evil talking stuffed animals. However, this one's actually kind of hilarious. I like this one. It's due to the likening of President Xi Jinping to oh. Winnie the Pooh. And this was the yeah. president himself banned Winnie the Pooh. And it wasn't only the movie, but he banned all Winnie the Pooh movies, TV series, and any merch to be sold in China. Because, and this is when we were talking earlier about internet trolls. This is where the internet trolls won on the president of China. <laughs> They started these like memes of like putting him side by side with Winnie the Pooh and like oh, saying how he looks shoot. similar to him. And it really pissed him off. And he banned <laughs> the entire country from having anything to do with Winnie the Pooh. That is hilarious. <laughs> There's so many. If you go down yeah. a rabbit hole on that, it's actually hilarious. They have a lot of the um, side by side comparisons. Like there's this one where him and he's like walking like with big strides, like his hands are out, like. You know, like his leg is out and his hands, like he's walking like long strides with President Obama next to him. And they have an image of Winnie the Pooh and Tigger right next to the two of them in the exact same positioning. <laughs> like, like they found all these images of Winnie the Pooh looking just like this guy and they're like trolling him on the Internet. Wow. And that's so to where he was like, uh-uh. Nobody in this entire country gets to enjoy this anymore. That's interesting. Imagine the ego and pride to have yeah. to do that. I can't believe. I'm like, how does this guy even have time to even see that people are trolling or even care? Right. You know, like just crazy. 
but that was a really interesting one. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to discuss, this one wasn't actually banned, but the rescuers, and I need to fact check this. So sorry, you guys, if this is not correct, I found kind of like a lot of weird information on this, but I just thought this was super fascinating regardless. So the rescuers evidently was like ready to go, not necessarily like completed, but like the concept and the idea and the story were ready to go long before it came out. And it was shelved in 1962 by Walt Disney because of the dislike of its political undertones, right? Then later after Walt passed in the 70s, they like revisited it and was like, let's do it anyway. And they <laughs> then released it in 1977. So it had to have time to be completed and was released. So the film originally was based off the novels of Marjorie Sharp. And her stories tell uh, tell us about an international organization in trying to rescue a child victim of human trafficking and forced oh, labor. Wow. So like, okay. I don't know about you, but I can't even tell you right now what The Rescuers is about. Can you tell me the, what The Rescuers is about? I've never seen either Rescuers movies. What? Yeah. Okay, that, that's inexcusable. <laughs> you were still a child. <laughs> yeah, it, it was just in that weird era. Like, I don't know. I don't know why I didn't. It came out before we were even born. Watch There's it. no excuse. It's so right. cute. Bianca, come on. Aww. Rick, I know some of the characters, but I never, yeah, I've never watched it. Whoops. I remember when, I remember Down Under coming out. I think mm -hmm. that was, we were kids, but then the original one, no, yeah, I didn't. Okay. So, well, but they seem to be like some sort of rebel spy type of things, right? That's Trying, what I felt it was. Yeah. They were like spies and they were like doing a little like mission. But the whole like human trafficking and stuff like that, I don't remember any of that. So I don't know if it ended up getting changed or if they, if it was part of the movie. I was also, I haven't honestly like given it a real watch as an adult yeah. either. So like, it I've sounds seen like we need to tons, watch it. Do a review. You know, maybe we just need to do that for our next movie review. Yeah. We could do a combo. I would be down for that. Like second. that that's one where I would I would want to watch and I'm just like, wait, how did I miss that? It's been so long. Okay. I yeah. think we should add it to our list. Let's do it. I like it. Uh, so yeah, that's it for banned movies. Um, I thought there was gonna be a lot more, especially like uh shorts. There was a lot of weird old Disney stuff. For instance, I can share a personal moment. Um when I found out that the original Disney Brothers uh, studio in Burbank, question mark, Burbank or Glendale, I always mix the two. It's like the same place to me because I don't live in LA, <laughs> but like up there near the studio somewhere, um, I found out it would turn into a skateboard slash tattoo shop. And I was like, I'm getting a Disney tattoo. Oh, there. Like, what? Tattoo. Yes. It is no longer a tattoo shop, oh. which bums me out. And I did talk to the owner and he is not a Disney holic. So oh. like, he did not buy the place because it was previously, you know, historic <laughs> in Disney history. He just happened on this place. And does whatever. he not want to make off money? It, like he could have made a lot of money by just leaning into I it. I know <laughs> they do lean into a little bit. They have like some stuff on their page about it. And, and they like, I think they had some merch that had like Disney stuff on it or something. So okay. they're, they're addressing it or at least they were, but they're no longer doing tattoos. But what I was thinking, I was like, all right, I'm going to get a Disney tattoo, something that was actually created in that studio, right? But the only thing that was created at that time was Alice comedies. I watched some of those old Alice comedies, and I decided I'm not going to be getting a tattoo of the Alice comedies because <laughs> they're not <laughs> PC whatsoever. They're so I was surprised too. that none of them actually got um, banned because there's some stuff on there that I wouldn't think would make it too long. Wait, now I got to know. Like, what stuff? <laughs> You just have to go watch it yourself on some free time, you know, because I am not going down and that route. These are those right like now. live action where it was a real little girl doing mm -hmm. Alice in Wonderland things. Yes. Yeah. Yep. With very even, like low budget special effects and all that. You know, another thing that I'd like to travel into at some point, we can do uh, reviews and whatnot on or Silly Symphonies. We could have a whole oh, bunch yeah. of information on Silly Symphonies. And what I just realized recently was that Mary Melodies which sounds oddly similar to Silly Symphonies, was done by Warner Brothers one year after Silly Symphonies came out, which is obviously that they've been doing those competition things this entire time. And, and the kind it kind of looks the same, right? The logo yep. and all that. Oh my goodness. And I think I knew Mary Melodies 
first because sometimes Disney was too. uh too premium, right? But on regular TV, you mm-hmm. get reruns of Bugs Bunny. I watched a lot but... of Looney Tunes and, yeah. and whatnot, and they're all the same uh, studio. Yeah, I want to kind of like read into the history of that combo also, but there's also some stuff in Merry Melodies and Silly Symphonies. I can't remember actually Symphony Silly Symphonies was questionable, but there's stuff in that nature yeah. where i was like oh ouch and then so, the way they started poking oh. fun well now it's i was going to say modern times but this was now when did roger rabbit come out because that's when they started they allowed themselves to mix and and kind yeah. of poke fun at the competition there was like the daffy versus donald doing right, piano right yeah so the Dilly piano is great it's yeah. so great i didn't get that at all when i was little <laughs> you know they're all the same to me and then I get it as an adult. I'm like, oh my God, amazing. Yep. So brilliant. I love yep. it. Oh, so that's it for banned TVs and movies for Disney content. Yeah. So um, the controversy was long. was always there. It's been there. All it's long. always been there. And I yeah. want to dive right into it. <laughs> yeah. And you know what the thing is? with At the end of the day, Disney is A&E, arts and entertainment. And art always comes with controversy. And mm-hmm. it just, it is the way it is. It is, exactly. Well, today we covered Pride Month. Once again, happy Pride to happy everyone Pride. out there. Every single one of you listeners, happy Pride to you. And go out and be a uh, good citizen and <laughs> and support the, the cause. Um, and hopefully if you're going to Pride Night, you'll have a blast. We also talked about park updates going on in DCA, Downtown Disney, and Disneyland, so the entire resort. And we looked at banned content from Disney. Well, thank you all for listening. We hope you enjoyed episode 192 of the Disney Holics Show. Follow us on social media at the Disney Holics. And if you want to get in touch, send us a DM on Instagram or contact us at thedisneyholics.com. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.